started with the body of our elephant seems a little intimidating, but the goal is to just make a slightly more oval shaped body than a round one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by chaining four and then SC in the second chain from the hook and then SC in the next two chains. So you'll just SC down those three chains. It looks something like this. Then we're going to turn and chain one just like you were working back and forth. But instead of working back and forth, we're going to do something a little different. So we're going to go back across and do increases in each of these three stitches. So increase and three increase. Okay, now without turning our work this way, we're going to turn it this way instead. So here's our starting chain on the top, and we're going to work in the bottoms of the starting chains instead. We're going to work an increase in each of those. Increase there, there, and there. Okay, now that's our first round, and see how it's an oval instead of a circle? So we're going to keep working without slip stitching just like we have been in continuous rounds. So then our next round is going to look just like the next round of any other circle. So we're going to SC and then increase in the next stitch, SC increase in the next stitch oops my bad sc increase and we're going to do that all the way around and this might be a good one to mark your stitches on if you like using stitch markers um or just counting is the way that I usually do it. I just make sure that I have um, repeated what I've been doing six times. So like if you go back and look at your increases, you know you've done one, two, three, four, five increases. So you know you gotta do one more. And that's how I usually count. It's just making sure that I've done the increases six times. So you're going to end up with ovals and they're going to get progressively bigger until you have um, your body shape. So you're going to keep doing these increase rounds until round nine and I will see you at round nine. Out to round eight, at the end of round eight you'll have 54 stitches around and your rectangle looks something like this. So here's our three stitches in the middle right there. And it's, you can see it's just a little bit more oblong than a regular circle. And that's really all we need for our elephant. He doesn't need to be super rectangular. He's just rectangular enough. So rows 9 through 16 are worked evenly around. And that's going to make his sides. So I will meet you guys at round 17 when we're going to make the leg holes. We finished our rounds going down the side of our elephant body. We have a nice edge on it now. There are 54 stitches all the way around. So round 17 we're going to build our leg holes and it, it looks intimidating but it's much easier than you think it's going to be. So we'll start doing that. So two, three, four, five, six chains and then we're going to skip 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're going to do two SCs here. So we're going to work in the next two SCs, just like this. And we're going to make another leg hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, and skip 12 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're going to work one stitch here. And what this is going to do is make 
these legs farther apart than these legs and this is going to be our like side to side view and then this is going to be the distance between the front and back legs and we want those to be a little farther apart so he doesn't look so square so next leg hold two three four five six chains and then skip one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and work two SCs here. So we've worked the next two SCs. And our last leg hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, and skip 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that takes us back to the last stitch of the previous round, or we're going to SC in that one. Now we have our four leg holes. So you can see we have holes here that are each 18 stitches around, so 12 and 6 is 18, and then we have one big hole in the middle that's 30 stitches around, 6, 12, 18, 24, and then 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 are the SCs. So now we just treat the middle like any other 30 round that needs to be decreased and closed up. So we're gonna close up the belly over rounds 18 through 21. So in order to do that, we're going to work on the chains and on these SCs and do our decrease round. That's three SCs and a decrease. It's gonna feel kind of funny because you're gonna be working in chains instead of stitches. So we're gonna say one, two, three, and then decrease on chains four and five of this round, of this section. Then one, and then stitches two and three are going to be in the SCs here. So two, three, and then we're going to decrease in the next two chains. Okay, so then we're gonna work one, two, three along the next chain. And this decrease is gonna feel really funny because you've only got one chain left here. So you're gonna do chain, uh, pull a loop up through the chain and then a loop up through the SC that's around the edge there that decrease so that feels weird but that's where it belongs then one two three on this chain and a decrease then one then two, three are going to be your SCs again. And a decrease. And then your last three chains are going to be SCs. One, two, I guess that was four chains, my bad. Three, and then the last chain and the starting SC. So your last chain, pull up a loop, and your starting SC, which is kind of hard to see since we have another one next to it, it's right here. You see that? And that's your last decrease. So, pull this away so you can see. We are closing up the hole in the belly now. So you can see we're shrinking that in and we're leaving these leg holes alone for now. We're closing the belly this for these few rounds. So then round 19, we're doing the same thing, but now we're working on SCs. So life gets a little easier again. So two SCs and a decrease. And I can go back to using my invisible decreases too because I have um, stitches with loops to work, front loops to work in. One, and 
there's two decreases SC SC three decreases SC SC four decreases SC SC five decreases SC, SC, six decreases, and we are back to the beginning again. So you can see our hole's almost closed. Hooray! Okay, next decrease round is one SC and a decrease. One SC. And a decrease. Okay. One SC. And a decrease. One SC. And a decrease. One SC and decrease. And the last one, one SC and a decrease. And we are back again. Okay. So this not the last one is just like closing up any other circle. We're gonna decrease all the way around. I like pinching it flat together to do this last round because it makes it just that tiny bit easier to see what I'm doing on these last rounds. So there's one decrease, there's two, see what I mean? It makes it hard to see. So here's our next two stitches right here, there's three. Four, whoops, see? Five. And six. And that's our last decrease. So now we can cut this off and spread this guy out. And you'll see all we have left is our six stitches in the middle, like we do on any other amigurumi. So we're going to pull this tight and grab a needle, needle, thread our tail through the hole. Oh dear, look what I just did. Sometimes you got to twist your yarn a few more extra times to get it through these tiny needles or else you fray it like I just did. All right, so I have my needle properly threaded now, and then I'm going to go up through the front loop of each of these six stitches. Four, five, and then pull tight and I get my nice little star that I like in the middle right there so give that a good tight pull and then I can knot this off and this is an end we can weave in because we are not going to do anything else attached to the belly here so this guy I'm going to weave back a little ways and then the, your best bet is always to go back and forth at least twice so since I don't really have four stitches to go sideways I'll just do two 
move up. And weave to the side again. Oops, and then weave up one more. And you gotta make sure you avoid this last edge because we are going to use it. So don't weave your ends through your chain. I know it's tempting, don't do it. Okay, so there's that. And cut this off. And we have our belly, all filled in and nice. So here's the top of our elephant. Here's our three starting stitches, there's our elephant. And here's his leg holes and his filled in belly. So you can see the front and back have one stitch and then the sides have two stitches on either side. And that'll make sure his legs are nice and rectangular instead of being square. So that'll help. All right, so next we have legs to do. To do our legs. So I'm gonna show you how to do one leg and then I'm gonna leave you to doing the other three exactly the same way. Um, but here we go. What we're gonna be doing is working on these 12 stitches that we originally skipped around the outside edge and then the six stitches on the inside so 18 all the way around and this is going to be super easy once you just get your um, first round done it's just six rounds even straight up um, and then we'll close up the leg and be done so you'll be real happy this will go real quick so we're going to do our SC join again put your loop over the hook insert it through the first stitch you're going to be working on you know what, I'm going to put that on that side of the yarn since um, we're going to be working around in a circle I like starting in the corner where the edge stitches start uh, rather than starting on the chains it's just a little easier that way pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two and we've created our first SC you can see the V right there so the first thing I'm going to do real quick too is tuck this tail in so that I don't have to mess with it anymore. All right. Then we're just going to SC even around the outside edge and that'll be 12 stitches. And it is kind of important to count on this first round to make sure you get um, all your chains and all your stitches accounted for. So four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, now we're just gonna skip right on over and start working on the chains. So if you see the back sides of our chains here, so here's one, two, three, four five and six from when we got started or from when we did the chains over here the other easy way to find it is to look for the stitches that we made um, along that first row there so here we're gonna go one two three, four, five, and six. Easy peasy, right? And just like on all of our other uh, rounds where we have a join, we're going to work in continuous rounds with no slip stitch. So to do that next round, you're just going to start right into that SC join, and then just start working around just like any other SC round. And I know that working with the body flopping around on the other side can be kind of a challenge, but you'll get used to it. And it'll become second nature the more of these amigurumi you do with the no seam method. Okay, 
and there you have it easy peasy so we've just cast on and started our leg up we're gonna do four more rounds straight up and I will catch up with you to close all right so we finished up our six rounds of SC's and so we have a nice little leg and as you can see the way we attached it there's no seam on here so that's a nice way to make a seamless amigurumi so what we're gonna do next now that we've finished our sixth round is start our decrease rounds for these decrease rounds we're gonna work in the back loops only of our stitches and what that's gonna do is kind of give the bottom of the foot a flat bottom instead of this rounding over slowly with a regular decrease by using the back loops only we're gonna make it take a hard corner and then it's gonna be a flat bottom so since we have 18 stitches to do six decreases we do one SC and like you can see I'm doing this in the back loops only and then one decrease and because we're working in the back loops I'm gonna just do a standard decrease because the invisible decreases don't work very well in back loops only they work they just don't work very well so one SC decrease 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 and we're back to where we started so you can see now how that made this take a sharp corner and it's a little gonna be a little bit easier to have a nice flat foot um, I'm not gonna stuff this one just because I have three other open legs so if I stuff it now it's just gonna fall into the bottom and not really do a whole lot of good but what you're gonna want to start doing now is stuffing as you go so you're gonna want to especially when you get down to these last two feet stuff at this point while you have a hole big enough to stuff um, and I would recommend stuffing the body pretty full from here on out so that you're ready to, to stuff because when you finish this fourth foot it's gonna be the last chance you have to stuff so if this foot over here is doesn't have enough stuffing in it you're gonna be kind of in a mess trying to get it in there and figure out how to do it so um, from here on out just try to stuff as you go because you still want this to be nice and round because this is what you're going for is to have four nice feet like this um, to make be support for your elephant so then just to do the last um, round of decreases um, we're going to work through both loops again um, because we don't need it to take any more hard corners so we're going to go ahead and work through both loops again and we're going to work oops invisible decreases so i guess that does work through just the front loops but um, you can do de uh, a regular decrease or an invisible decrease here i don't I, it doesn't really matter because we've changed direction or we're not trying to make that hard corner anymore That's five, and that's our last decrease. So then we can cut this off, and we're going to kind of pretend that this is stuffed um, so that you can see how to close this. But it's the same way we've been closing everything, so we're going to just go through and through that front loop thread up and thread up through this one and that one and that one all the way around till we're back to the beginning 
and pull tight. And we have our little star closure that we like. So, and then you're just gonna weave this end in, obviously. So I like to weave it through the flattest part of the foot and then out to the outside edge because then I can see these stitches a little better to weave back and forth. And like we did last time, I'm gonna weave four stitches one way, and four stitches the other way, and then do a better job going down on this one. And then four stitches back the other way again. And that pretty much guarantees that you're not, not coming out. So we cut that off. And you'll see we have our nice little foot and it has a flat bottom on it so when we go when we have all our feet done and we go for this guy to stand up he'll have a nice flat surface to stand on so just repeat that on all four feet stuffing as you go so you have a nice firmly stuffed body with four legs that are nice and flat and make sure you count your rounds so you so all your legs are the same length or else he might wobble a bit like a table all right. To attach the head, I decided to zoom out a bit so we could get a little bit more in here together um, about how this is done. This is a little different, obviously, because we're trying to attach something that doesn't have a fixed number of stitches to something else that doesn't have a fixed number of stitches, and we need it to attach in a specific angle so that, I'm gonna move his ears here, so that his head trumpets up at the angle we need it to in order to make a heart when his trunk touches his buddies over here. So in order to do that, we have to attach it at just the right angle. What I found out is that the best place to, the best way to do that is to pick this center point and attach it exactly to, so here's our legs. Front, these are the two with the two stitches on either side are the sides and the two with one stitch on either side as the front and back. So what we're gonna do is go to the front here and go to round two. So round one would be kind of in the middle here. But after round one is round two. So we're gonna put this in round two, right as, as centered here as we can get. And that's where the center point of our head is gonna go, where our tail, our finishing tail is coming out. So you'll see it like that. So when we line it up like that from far away, you'll see that that gives us the angle we're looking for with the body. So what we need to do is just mark as we go around with our pins where the head touches the body so that we get it just right the way we want it. So what I like to do is line that up. I'll put a pin there so it's easy to see. So line those two pins up, then we're going to take two more pins and we're going to put one in the body right here where it touches and one in the head right there. So you can see those are all lined up. Okay, now we're going to keep going and go around pin one in the body right here. So we got to make sure those pins are still lining up here and here. And then we need to add one in the head that matches. Okay, and go around to the other side, match up our pins, and then add a pin. Let's see, let's do purple this time in the body where that touches and again in the head. So when we take this apart again and we have our starting stitch here, you'll see that we have essentially the same shape on the head as we do on the body. And this is a good spot to double check. Double check and make sure these seem to be the same amount apart. If you have one that like this ended up clear over here or something, this is a good time to kind of move it so that they match. 
And now you can just go right ahead and attach this going around, working using this ta starting tail, and you're just gonna start threading. You're just gonna thread it through that starting um, stitch on the body that you have marked, and then back up through the stitch you have marked here, and then work your way slowly around whichever way you want to go, and just work a straight line from pin to pin. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'll do like a little section for you. This is very hard to do from this angle and you guys still being able to see. So I'm going to start through here. Oh goodness sakes. And we're going to sew in a straight line from that pin to this pin. I'm going to do it kind of loose so you can see. Oh, crud. So with your pins all lined up, you can sew his head on, just going in a straight line from pin to pin. So we're going to start out, and I'm going to sew kind of in a loose straight line so you can see the idea. But um, we're going to go in that hole there since that's our starting point. Then we're just working in a straight line toward our other pin. Whoops, got some ear hair there. Oh, and see that one is going to come up. We're going to go ahead and take that one out anyway because we're done working with it. So we've gotten to our body pin here. And we're going to come up and we'll, in, and we'll come out through our head pin. And we'll have made a straight line from the purple pins, or from the starting pins, the light green pins, to the purple pins. So we'll pull that tight see a nice straight line from there to there. So we'll give his head a quick turn. Let's see, get that ear out of the way. Now we gotta make a straight line from this from this point to our next pin. So we'll just start going that way. And you can see how this is just a little bit easier than trying to finagle it straight or trying to pin the actual head onto the body while you're working. Um, it's hard enough even having them close together, much less pinned together while you're trying to work. So, let's see here. Oh, right there. Like that. And we'll come out through our other pin stitch, like that. And we'll give it a tug. And there you go, there's another nice straight line. So next we go to this set of pins. And you can see how this is just going to make it nice and straight and even. This one I'm going to go ahead and work kind of along the line here um, of this row. Sorry, Mr. Elephant, I gotta kind of decapitate here for a second so we can see what we're doing. Oh, and we're stuck on our leg. Let's go ahead and skip one here so we need to kind of get going. And keep in mind, because we're working on two round surfaces that aren't necessarily the same distance apart, that you might not, they might not be the exact same number of stitches apart, 
on the top as they are, or on the body as they are on the head, so you might have to tweak that slightly. Okay, so there's an extra straight line. Give it a tug. And there's our straight line on the bottom. Alright, now we're going to go around again. Line up those two pins. And go in a straight line toward our pins. And we're just looped around the leg again. Oops, that was unintentional. We're making a mess there, aren't we? Okay. Sorry, Mr. Elephant. So, there. And reach our pin on this side and on. This side. Okay, take those out. Give it a tug. That one didn't need tugged quite as tight. And then next we just have to go in a straight line back to our starting point. So it's right there. So that's easy enough. Straight line. Back to the beginning. Alright, give that a tug. And we have an attached elephant head. Look at that. Nice and cleanly attached and he sits at the angle we want him to sit at. His head's nice and up. It's kind of hard to see when I can't get his whole body in the frame, but you can see his position is where we want it to be. His head is on there nice and clean, and we didn't have to pin his head into place and hope it didn't come off while we were working. So, I hope you've enjoyed making your elephant. All you have left to do is attach a little tail, and I'll go ahead and let you do that on your own. And I hope you've enjoyed him. I sure have. And I'd love, 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 love to see pictures of your elephants. I'd love to see pictures of any of your Amigurumi that you make with me. Uh, and I would love for you to post them either on the Facebook group, Hookers and Crafters, or on the comment section on the blog, um, www.hookedbykatie.com. That's probably where you're watching this. And I will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.